it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free review of The Diviners by Libba Bray. So I've been waiting a while to do this review. I read this book last month, but I just needed to collect my feelings and get coherent thoughts because this book was just a roller coaster. Just, oh my god. So this book is a kind of paranormal historical fiction that takes place in the 1920s in New York and it follows the story of Evie O'Neill who moves from Ohio to New York to live with her uncle and her uncle's a little bit different. He has this obsession with the occult and kind of the creepy magical things that go hand in hand with that. So he is asked to help investigate these murders that keep happening and of course Evie gets herself wrapped up into that. So we have the backdrop of 1920s New York with all like the flappers and like prohibition and all of that stuff and we also have this creepy supernatural um, murder mystery going on and it's just a recipe for just success right there. And what really makes it is Libba Bray's writing. She is just able to create such an atmosphere like I was just so engrossed in it and even though this is a really big book like it's like 600 pages it felt like it was like a hundred pages. Like I just kept on flipping the pages, I wanted to know what was happening, and it was just crazy. So the protagonist, Evie O'Neill, is kind of your typical flapper. She's very spunky and high-spirited, and she just wants more out of life, and she just wants to be recognized as special, and you kind of get a look at her more sensitive side, and you kind of get to see that she is a little bit troubled, and she does have a few issues that kind of make her a little bit selfish. So she's kind of set up as this very intelligent yet afflicted character and it's just a she's a really great protagonist for the story. And then we also have a kind of side protagonist, Memphis Campbell, and he just happens to be black, which is obviously not a very easy thing to be in 1920s New York. So he kind of offers a view of the harsher side of New York as opposed to Evie's view of kind of more upstate New York in that very glamorous life. And then we also have the secondary characters, so we have Sam, who is the pickpocket, but he's a very lovable, lovable sarcastic character. We have Mabel, who is um, Evie's very cautious and guarded best friend. And then we have Theta, who is kind of the troubled picture of beauty. She's really the embodiment of what a flapper should be. And we, of course, have her uncle Will, who is a very gentle, guarded man, but obviously very, very smart who owns the Museum of the Occult, where most of the story takes place. And finally, Jericho the Gentle Giant. And then of course we have Naughty John, who is the very, very creepy ghost, and that's all I'm gonna say about him. So we have all of these characters, and you would think that would get really confusing, but it wasn't at all. Libba Bray was able to give each character such a distinct voice, and that is something that's really, really hard to do, but I just, I knew who was talking all the time, and I wasn't confused, and I thought that was just awesome. So I was a little bit spoiled on this story because someone's synopsis kind of over-explained things, so then when the major plot twist came, I was like, oh, I already knew that. So that kind of sucked, but even with that, I was still so engrossed in the stories that I felt like I was like alongside Evie trying to help her solve this murder and it was really really just super cool to be so engaged in a story because I don't think I've been that engaged in a really long time. So one of the things that helped um, engross me in the story was the atmosphere that Libba Bear created and she really kind of solidified the creepy kind of spooky atmosphere with the pers her use of perspective. So she would have parts that were told from the perspective of wind, parts from a spider, parts from like all the different characters but then also other things and it was just so interesting and just creepy and I can't even explain it. You just have to read it. It was just really 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 cool. So I do try and kind of point out some negatives even in stories that I do really really love so I have three for you. So number one, the love story was a little bit confusing. I mean it wasn't the central focus which was awesome. There wasn't really too much of a love story but when it was introduced it was a little bit kind of meh and a little bit confusing. Number two is the ending was kind of meh in some respects but really wow in others. It was like it was kind of dragged on a little bit and I think that's what kind of made it meh. Like I kind of felt there was a lull in the action for quite a bit of time, but it still ended awesomely. I just thought it should have ended and then it like, it was like it ended and then there were another 50 pages. I think it 
didn't need the extra 50 pages. So overall, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. I just really, really loved it. Oh my god, it was so cool. So I will definitely be reading more Love of Bray because the writing was just incredible. So to kind of sum it up, yes, I would definitely recommend this to a friend. Yes, I will be continuing with the series. And yes, I would reread this. So that is all for today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!